and girls, and welcome to my preview of SC Forskla against Arsenal in the Europa League. And uh, it's one of those games that we could do without. Um, I'm really not looking forward to this game in any way, shape or form. Um, we've got Spurs at the weekend. That's our priority. Um, so I really don't think there's going to be many first team players out there, to be honest. And I don't actually blame the manager. I've actually got no problem with it whatsoever if he goes and plays an under-23 side. Um, I'm sure you've all seen over recent days the problems that are occurring in the Ukraine. Um, they've issued martial law in certain areas of the Ukraine. It's a very, very dangerous place to go right now. Um, late last night, um, UEFA have acted upon safety concerns and they've actually moved the game from Poltava, where it was originally you know, meant to be played. Um, and it's now gonna be in the um, National Stadium in Kiev. So yeah, there's obviously concerns there. Um, but what it does mean is that there's quite a few Arsenal fans that have made the trip that are stranded, or their travel arrangements have been completely messed up. Um, a lot of fans I know were flying into Kiev, but then they were making their, you know, arrangements via train, um, private taxis, um, to the long drive to where the stadium is, and they had hotels booked there and everything. So hopefully um, the club can, you know, help out with UEFA or whatever, and you know, reimburse fans that have been, you know, left out of pocket at such short notice. Um, but of course the primary concern is your safety. So, you know, that's what I care about, that everyone's safe and sound. Um, there's a few people that are already in Poltova and they're now wondering how the hell they're gonna get to Kiev. They've got to find a hotel to stay there now. And yeah, like I said, it's not great. It's not ideal. And um, this game just comes at the complete wrong time for all of us. Um, but we've got to go out there and do the job. We've already qualified. Um, avoid defeat in this and we've won the group confirmed um, but yeah I can't really say much more than you know what I'm already saying about this game it doesn't fill me with any excitement I'm not looking forward to it um, I don't really care about the result to be honest my concern is that you know all the fans are safe and all the team are safe and you know, we just get through the day and, you know, we can then focus on Spurs at the weekend. Um, so, yeah, I can't really say much more than that. In terms of Vorskla, we've already played them, we've already beaten them. Um, they're not having the greatest of times in the league. They lost last time out. Um, but it's a huge game for them. Let's remember that. It's a huge, huge game for them. I feel sorry for them, um, any of their fans. And um, it's just not a good situation right now. That's you know, putting it pretty straightforward as to what's actually going on. It's just not ideal for anyone. Um, but there's a game to be played. We have to play it. And um, yeah, we will see what happens. And um, hopefully we've got enough to get the win. Um, um, yeah, we will wait and see. But in terms of my predicted 1 to 11, um, this is going to be a very, very interesting one. Um, so starting off in goal, I'm gonna go with Petr Cech. Um, this is probably one of the most straightforward of the decisions because we already know now that Bern Leno is our first choice keeper. He's gonna stay at home. Um, Petr Cech, Emi Martinez is the reserve backup goalkeeper. And um, yeah, pretty straightforward and pretty simple to be quite honest with you. Uh, I'm gonna move into the defensive area and I think we're gonna revert back to the four. Um, for this game. So first of all, in the right back position, we're going to go with Stefan Licksteiner. Um, again, another pretty straightforward decision. He's come back from his hamstring injury um, and I have no doubt that he will probably play in this game. That's pretty straightforward. Hector Bellerin, he's not going to be risked and he's not going to be um, taken over to Kiev. So he'll be left at home. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Stefan Licksteiner in at right back. In the left back position, I'm going to go with Ainsley Maitland Niles. Um, again, Nacho Monreal's out injured. Kalazinak, need him for the weekend. Not going to take any chances. So, straightforward, we're going to go with Ainsley Maitland Niles. Moving into the central defensive area. 
And um, this is where we've got a few problems because we're short on numbers and everything else. But first of all, I'm going to go with Socrates. Um, simple reason being, I do think we need him at the weekend against Spurs and whatnot. But he hasn't played a lot of football lately. So it would be good for him to get some more minutes under his belt. I'm not, you know, any doubt that he's going to be worried about the cold out there or anything. He seems like a tough guy and he'll just get through it. He'll probably wear a short sleeve shirt or something and, and just crack on with it. But yeah, for this one, I'm going to go with Socrates. Um, alongside him, this is where things get a little tough now because we are short in numbers. I don't think we're going to take Mustafi and I don't think that we're going to take um, Rob Holding. So I'm actually going to go for the young Spanish lad that plays at centre back. And again, I can't pronounce his bloody name. Um, so yeah, you know who I'm on about. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's what I would go with. I'd give him the opportunity. He's played already in the Carabao Cup. Give him the opportunity. Can't take any more risks. We're short in numbers in this area, so that's what I'm going to go with. Moving into the midfield area, first of all, in that kind of defensive midfield role, we're going to go with Mohamed El Nenny. Um, experienced player. How long will he be at Arsenal? There's talk that he'll be out the door in January or at the end of the season at least. But at the moment, he is an Arsenal player and he becomes very useful for these kind of games. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Mohamed El Nenny. Um, alongside him in that area, I'm going to go with the young lad, Gwendozi. Um, again, not risking Granite Xhaka, Lucas Torreira. They're going to stay at home and have a nice rest and everything else. Um, so, yeah, the young lad, Gwendozi, another opportunity for him to play, another opportunity for him to show what he can do. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to move into the attacking three. First of all, we're going to go with Henrik Mkhitaryan. Um, I'll send him there just because of how poor his performance was against Bournemouth. Um, more than anything, punishment. You're going over there and you're going to play. Um, and you're going to have to be one of the senior players, step up and actually do the job instead of you know, putting them half-hearted kind of performances in that we saw against Bournemouth because it was not great. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to go with is Henrik Mkhitaryan. Um, in that Meza Ozil kind of roll the number 10. I'm going to go with Aaron Ramsey. I'm not taking Meza Ozil over there. Um, and it's nothing to do with it's cold and he'll sulk or anything like that because it's not me that says that. It's the fact that we will need him against Spurs and he will play against Spurs. Um, so Meza Ozil's not going over there and I am going to go with Aaron Ramsey. Um, in the next position, um, it's a shame Danny Welbeck's injured, man, because he's key to these kind of games. But... Um, next up, I'm actually going to go with Emil Smith-Rowe. I'm going to give him an opportunity in this game. Um, and I think that he should play as well. He kind of drift in and out from the flanks and inside and whatnot. And I think he'll do a good job. Um, and it'll be a good game for him and some experience and whatnot. And um, it'll be an opportunity, like I said. So um, I'm going to go with Emil Smith-Rowe. Up front as the striker, I'm going to go for the young lad, Eddie Nketiah. Um, Alexandra Lacazette had a little you know, groin injury and it was a precaution why he didn't play against Bournemouth. Not going to be risking him in this game, not in these kind of temperatures either, because um, they reckon it's going to go to about minus 13 by kickoff. Um, so yeah, Lacazette, Aubameyang, they're going to be at home, they're going to be rested and um, getting ready for the weekend, to be quite honest with you, and it's as simple as that. Um, in terms of the substitutions, now what I have noticed with Unai Emery is that he kind of brings some of the main first team players and whatnot, and if things are going wrong, he'll bring them on. Be interesting to see what he does with this one. Will he actually, you know, do that and take maybe Ozil, maybe Aubameyang, um, you know, and if things are going wrong or whatnot. Personally, I wouldn't bother. It's a pointless game, like I said, and we've got other priorities, and that's no disrespect to Vorce Club. Um, but we do have other priorities right now and I'd load the bench up with more under 23 players to be quite honest with you maybe even put Koscielny on the bench um, I know he come through 45 minutes um, for the under 23s the other day it depends how he's reacted to that and obviously um, the weather conditions because you know is it good for him being in that kind of condition when he's coming back with rehabilitation and whatnot we will wait and see, no doubt. So that's the selection that Unai Emery is going to have to deal with and we will wait and see. It'll be an interesting team, that's for sure. But even if he does go over there with all the kids and the reserve players and whatnot and none of the main players, there, I don't think any supporter is going to moan about it, to be quite honest. We know what the priority is and we know that this game just come at the wrong time, like I've said a hundred times. So 
Um, there we have it. That is the preview. That is the predicted 1 to 11. Um, keep an eye out for the match day vlog uh, because I will be out there in the Ukraine um, flying out in the early hours. So, um, yeah, great crack. <laughs> uh, there'll be a player ratings video the following day. And also keep an eye out on AFTV because the All Guns Blazing podcast is back. And we've got a nice one for you before the Spurs game, trust me. Ah, <laughs> but before round, it's FC Borskla, minus 13 conditions. And um, a country that's got martial law. It's going to be great. Thank you very much for the Europa League. Um, until I see you lot for the Matchday vlog, I am out of here.